So a lot of research being done on board the International Space Station, uh, actually taking a look at crew health and how the human body is able to adapt to the rigors of space flight. Uh, the SpaceX Dragon vehicle, uh, the sixth resupply mission for SpaceX is bringing up about two tons of new research. And inside is a pretty exciting new study called Osteo-4. And uh, today I'm joined by the uh, experiment's pr principal investigator, uh, Dr. Paola divietti Pajevic. Uh, coming to us, uh, she's an associate professor for molecular and cell biology from Boston University. Uh, first off, doctor, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you could start off, uh, so what is it your experiment's looking at? Um, I hear it's something called osteos, um, sorry, uh, osteocytes. Uh, can you walk us a little bit through what that is and just a general overview? What are you guys going to be looking at? Sure. Well, th first of all, thank, uh, thanks, Dan, for having me here. Um, so the OSO4 is osteocytes and mechanotransduction. And osteocytes, uh, for whoever is not really familiar with uh, bone biology, are the most abund abundant cells in the bone. And these are the cells that are completely embedded within the mineralized matrix of the bone. And these are the cells that you thought that they can sense the mechanical forces or the load ap applied to the skeleton and then transform this mechanical load into biological signal. So it's, it's, it's known that during a reduced load, like a, during, a, for example, prolonged bed rest, or during a, a, a space flight, there is a bone loss. And the bone loss is mostly driven by signals sent to a bone cells capable of making bone or destroying bone by osteocytes. So the goal of the osteoformation is really to identify genes and proteins or factors that are changed in osteocytes by microgravity. And this will be the first time that osteocytes uh, will be flown in space. And uh, this project will actually is funded both by uh, uh, NIAMS and NIH, and also funded by CASES and by the NASA Kennedy Space Center. Okay, so we're looking at osteocytes. You said they're the most abundant cell, and they sense things like mechanical forces. So, th you know, things like weightlifting, I assume, are, are something they set off. What are the actual operations that you guys are going to be doing to get this data? What's physically going to be happening in this experiment on board the station? Right. So, well, for, so we will use a, a, an osteocytic cell line. We will use a cell line that we isolate and we develop in my, in my laboratory. And these cell lines are developed, uh, uh, were isolated from a long bone of animal, of mice. These cells will be grown in a three-dimensional structure. It's a 200 uh, micron thick uh, structure that mimically to be more than three-dimensional structure of bone. And we will house uh, these uh, um, cells in scaffold. And the scaffold will be integrated in bioreactor. Bioreactor are fully enclosed a system in which we can grow the cells because there will be nutrients provided to the cells at different during the mission. And then this bioreactor will be integrated in, into a fully automated fluid pathway that will provide not only the nutrients to the cells, but also later time will be provide fixative and then we can preserve the cells for a later study. So during the mission, uh, we have a nine bioreactor in this mission. And at different time uh, along the, the experiment, astronaut will retrieve this uh, payload in which there will be three bioreactors. And we will store them at cold temperature. And then once the experiment will be done and we have an operation happening at right almost as soon as the Dragon reached the ISS. So we, we will have operation happening after three days or five days or seven days that these cells have been exposed to microgravity. They will be retrieved, stored at uh, cold temperature, and then the samples will be brought back by the same vessel, by the dragon, uh, uh, the dragon, and then they will be brought back to my laboratory, and then we will, we will study them once they are back in the lab. And uh, this actually, the, the system was developed by CAM Technology in collaboration with the Canadian Space Agency, and this actually is the fourth time that this payload uh, is uh, flying. And uh, also, actually, is an acronym for osteoporosis uh, uh, experiment in orbit. But this is the first time that uh, the payload will be actually physically brought into the ISS. Okay, okay, very, very cool. So, so what are some of the next steps after you get these samples back? You know, from orbit, Dragon's going to bring them home, and you said they're going to come back to you. What are what are some of the next steps for the experiment? Well, definitely, we'll be very careful when we when we use or when we analyze the samples. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what we will do, we will both uh, isolate uh, RNA to look for gene expression. We will try to do gene profiling to try to identify either genes that we know are changed during disease or microgravity, 
but also try to see if we can identify novel targets. And then we will also look at the cell structure, how the cells are changing. And we also look at some protein expression. We might do proteomic, that is like a just screen for all possible protein they are changing these cells. And then try to identify possibly potential novel targets or novel ter uh, genes that we can target for down the line, maybe develop novel therapeutic for osteopenia or osteoporosis or bone disease. Okay. And just to, you know, bring it all home for us, what are... What are some of the benefits that we could reap from a study like this? What could this improve for not only you know, people in space, but people down here on the Earth? Correct. So the, the mechanism of bone loss that happen when you are in space are the same mechanisms that happen when you are, a, for example, a prolonged bone loss, or if you are a, during paralysis, or just during the old age in which there is a bone loss. So try to study a system, like in our case, our society, in an extreme condition like in space. We really give us a a, very, a pretty good clue of what's happened to the bone for uh, when here on, uh, on Earth. So it will not only give us some um, novel uh, pathway or potential therapeutic for treating uh, bone loss due to disease like in space flight or bed rest, but also potentially help us to treat any kind of bone disease that will, that will lead to like reduced bone, bone mass, like just aging or, or osteoporosis. That affect like five million or even more people on, on, on Earth. So I think that uh, we, will, the, we will use the ISS as our national laboratory in space to really try to benefit uh, the people on Earth. All right. Well, a very, very interesting study, some really interesting stuff that could come out of it. Um, and, you know, we're so glad to hear about it. So, again, Dr. Paola Pajovic uh, from the Boston University, the principal investigator of Osteo4, just a, a couple hours away now from the International Space Station. Thank you so much for joining me today, giving us a, an inside look at your experiment. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot for, for, having, us, for having me.